Today I'm going to be installing a set of Metal Cloak Pro Alignment uh, drop brackets. So go ahead and get started. These are what comes in the package from Metal Cloak for the Pro Alignment brackets. A bunch of cool packing. Get your spacers, the washer, a bunch of nice hardware, and the brackets themselves. Check these out, pretty sweet. Welds, not bad, pretty good, pretty good, pretty beefy. So these are going to be for the 2018 and newer JL for the front control arm drop brackets. GoPro stop recording. What we're going to be doing is removing lower control arm bolt, the upper control arm bolt, and then removing the control arms from the frame mount and then installing the bracket up here which will drop this control arm frame side down so you can see it's at a bit of an angle right now so hopefully the lower angle will improve the ride quality first thing metal cloak recommends doing is removing the 21 millimeter frame side upper track bar bolt so we'll go ahead and get that removed. Next, you got to get under your Jeep and remove the 18 millimeter frame side bolt from the upper control arms. Next, we're going to remove the 21 millimeter bolt from the lower control arm frame side mount. So not the axle side, but the frame side, 21 millimeter, 24, excuse me. I'm going to have to remove the, the upper bolt on the control arm axle side as well because I can't get my upper control arm out of here. After removing the upper control arm bolt at the axle side, I can get my upper control arm out of here. So I can finally put in the drop bracket. In the box, you get two small spacers, two larger spacers, two Allen bolts with their really cool slide washers that will go in the back, two looks like 5 8 fine thread screws, and then three looks like uh, maybe 3 8 um, coarse thread, a couple washers, and for these Allen screws, you will need a 5 16th socket or uh, Allen wrench 5 16th 
looks like there is a driver's and a passenger's where they will attach. This little cutout is for the upper control arm. You'll see as it slides in there. Then this goes back and attaches right under that factory skid plate. Looks like I have to remove this 18 millimeter from the skid plate. The drop bracket installed. Slide it up there and this little, I don't know if you can see that, this little notch right here goes right in the upper control arm bracket. Right. Slides under the skid plate frame. It's kind of hard to Now that we got the skid plate removed, we can get this thing in here. Oh yeah, very much easier. Go ahead and take your Allen with the washer. Put your washers on your 5 8 bolt and slide that into the lower bolt, lower control arm with the, the larger spacer. This is bigger of the two. with the smaller spacer in the upper control arm bolt. Okay, I'm gonna deviate from the metal cloak instructions. They recommend putting the supplied hardware, which is a standard nylock and bolt in the upper control arm mount. But there's no way you're gonna be able to tighten that. So I am going to use the factory provided T-nut and uh, bolt with the smaller spacer in the upper control arm. This is going to be kind of a pain to get the spacer in because it needs to go inside of the factory control arm mount. See if I can get you a video of what I'm talking about. So if you can see the spacer goes on the inside of the factory control arm mount in there. You get to kind of wedge it in there. Let's see if I can get it. After a little bit of messing around with it, I got the bolt in and the factory T-bolt. And so that's it. Moving on. Then go ahead and tighten the lower control arm bolt. And this one will be a 24 millimeter. It's pretty. Since I've got a Rubicon, they supply this really neat fancy washer that goes in the back of the bracket. However, my factory skid plate
goes to that same bracket. So instead of using their washer, I'm gonna put the factory hardware back in so I can keep my factory cross member. Next step is to install the lower control arm with the factory hardware. Might need a little help from the pry bar. They recommend the middle hole for three inch lifts and I've got a three and a half inch lift from them so I'll go in the middle hole. Okay, and then after everything's attached, go ahead and torque it to spec. These upper ones are 103 foot pounds, and then plus or minus some degrees. Same with the bottom ones. And what you're doing when you tighten it to a torque spec and then add a certain number of degrees is that you're first torquing it to ensure that it's the clamp is totally closed. And then what you're doing after you add those particular degrees is you're actually stretching the bolt. And with the thread pitch, the engineers have calculated that with that uh, enough of uh, angular degrees that you're increasing it by, you stretch the bolt to its proper torque. Hope that helps explain that. Then after you're done, go ahead and finish the other side, but thought it'd be worth showing you the comparison so that is a picture of the angle now after the croton troll arm drop bracket got my handy dandy little angle fire and there attached to the lower control arm and you can see that this side, after I've installed the bracket, lower control arm is right around five degrees, maybe five and a half. And my passenger side, which is still stock, has around 15 degrees or so. So it reduced my control arm angle about 10 degrees so hopefully that should improve the ride quality quite a bit on my passenger side I was having a little bit of trouble to get the lower control arm bolt lined up so what I did was use a ratchet strap attach it to the lower shock mount on the axle and then put it in the frame and that allows you to pull your ratchet strap so you can move the axle backwards so you can get your bolt in. Also, on some passenger side with the track bar unhooked, this bolt wasn't going in straight because I noticed my whole Jeep had tilted to the side when I took the track bar off. So I put another ratchet strap on the front from the axle to the frame and pulled it to the side so when I tried to put in this bolt, it went in straight, and it went all the way through. After getting everything installed, I put the jack right here on the yoke, and then tie a ratchet strap from the bumper to, I'm just hooking it right here on my skid plate, and by jacking it up or tightening the ratchet strap you can change the pinion angle so you can set it right now my pinion angle is set right at about see that's right at one degree and so the Machine faces on your diff are at 
zero degrees where your caster is six degrees behind that so if you have one degree here that puts you at seven degrees of caster and that's how I set my caster after you're done getting all that set up go ahead and add some bolt mark this stuff is great I love this stuff you put it on all of your joints or your bolted joints and that allows you to do a very quick inspection to know if anything's loosened or not. Just add a little dab, and now you can tell if that bolt has loosened up or not. After it's all installed, just a quick check, it does lower your control arm by about, from center line to center line, about three inches. And that's a lower control arm. Yep. And so I just finished. I took it for a quick test drive. It does write it quite a bit better. The drop brackets do definitely, I, like I showed you, lose a bit of clearance, but I think they're worth it.